Hello and welcome to Indep. I'm Tina Jha. The 2019 Nobel Prize announcements were made this week. The first prize in the category of physiology or medicine have been given to a trio of scientists for their work on cells' ability to sense and react to oxygen availability. The Nobel Prize in Physics has also been announced for three scientists for their contribution to the understanding of the evolution of the universe. While for chemistry as well, the Nobel Prize has been given once again to three scientists who have worked to develop and advance lithium-ion batteries. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, who made peace last year with bitter for Eritrea, has been awarded the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize. The Nobel Prize is widely regarded as the most prestigious award given for intellectual achievement across the world. And they are awarded annually from a fund bequeathed for the purpose by Alfred Nobel. The laureates will be honoured at an elegant ceremony on 10 December in Stockholm. 10 December is the death anniversary of founder Alfred Nobel. Today in in-depth, we'll talk about the Nobel Prize winners and the achievements that they have made. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ali beat out competition from hundreds of nominees for the 100th Nobel Peace Prize, including 16-year-old activist Greta Thunberg and New Zealand's leader Jacinda Ardern. While announcing the Peace Prize, chairman of the Norwegian Nobel Committee said that Abiy Ahmed gave Ethiopians hope for a better life. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2019 to Ethiopian Prime Minister Abe Ahmed Ali for his efforts to achieve peace and international cooperation, and in particular for his decisive initiative to resolve the border conflict with neighboring Eritrea. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abe Ahmed has won the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts to achieve peace and international cooperation and in particular for his decisive initiative to resolve the border conflict with neighboring Eritrea. The prize is also meant to recognize all the stakeholders working for peace and reconciliation in Ethiopia and in the East and Northeast African regions. Abe Ahmed has received the Peace Prize for his role in ending the 20-year war between Ethiopia and Eritrea, a war over disputed border territory that came at a huge financial and human cost to both. Ethiopia and Eritrea have been long-time foes. Both countries fought a war that killed more than 70,000 people from 1998 to 2000 and failed to implement a 2000 peace deal. When Abe Ahmed became Prime Minister in April 2018, he made it clear that he wished to resume peace talks with Eritrea. On July 8, 2018, Eritrea's President Isaias Akwerki warmly welcomed Ahmed to the Eritrean capital Asmara. In close cooperation with Akwerki, Abe Ahmed worked out the principles of a peace agreement to end the long no peace, no war stalemate between the two countries. كبركم نرات هيمانوت ابي تعدن نسغاتكم حزبات اثيوبيان ايرتران سلام انت فطروم انت حبرو من زوبانا قرن افريكا ناي سلامن لمعاتن زوبا خونيو زتبتاتنو اب سدتن وردتن زلو حزبتاتنا ناب حجروم بخبري كملسو يوم Abe took office in April 2018 and since then he has been pushing Ethiopia towards new democratic freedoms, also trying to open the country up to the outside world after decades of security-obsessed isolation. Abe has managed to end a state of emergency, freed political prisoners, got parliament to lift a terrorist ban on opposition groups and pledged to facilitate foreign investment in key sectors of the economy. 
In the wake of the peace process with Eritrea, Prime Minister Abe has engaged in other peace and reconciliation processes in East and Northeast Africa. In September 2018, he and his government contributed actively to the normalization of diplomatic relations between Eritrea and Djibouti after many years of political hostility. Additionally, Abe Ahmed has sought to mediate between Kenya and Somalia in their protracted conflict over rights to a disputed marine area. In Sudan, the military regime and the opposition have returned to the negotiating table. On the 17th of August, they released a joint draft of a new constitution intended to secure a peaceful transition to civil rule in the country. Prime Minister Ahmed played a key role in the process that led to the agreement. The Norwegian Nobel Committee hopes that the Nobel Peace Prize will strengthen Prime Minister Abe Ahmed in his important work for peace and reconciliation. With inputs from Balbir Singh Gulati, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Polish novelist Olga Tokarczuk and Austrian writer Peter Hanke have won the 2018 and 2019 Nobel Prizes for Literature. The double prizes came after a year's hiatus due to sex abuse allegations that rocked the secretive Swedish Academy, which selects the laureates. Polish novelist Olga Tokarczuk and Austrian author Peter Hanke Two writers whose works are deeply intertwined in Europe's religious, ethnic and social fault lines won the 2018 and 2019 Nobel Prizes for Literature. She's a writer preoccupied with local life, but at the same time inspired by maps and speculative thought, looking at life on Earth from above. Her work centers on migration and cultural transitions. Olga Tokarczuk is only the 15th woman to win the Nobel Literature Prize in more than a century. She is one of Poland's best-known authors, known for her humanist themes and playful, subversive streak. She won the Booker International Prize in the year 2018 for her book, Flights. Her debut novel was published in 1993 and her breakthrough came three years later with Primeval and Other Times, which is set in a mythical village and traced Poland's history from the First World War to the 1980s. The rare double announcement came after no Literature Nobel was awarded last year due to sex abuse allegations that tarnished the Swedish Academy, the group that awards the Literature Prize. Jean-Claude Arnoux, the husband of a former Academy member, was convicted last year of two rapes committed in 2011. I know that I am quite a good writer, but I never <laughs> thought in my my life that I won this kind of prize. So I think that I have to change my mind completely now. And yeah, but I'm, I'm also very, very happy that um, there are two of us, Peter Handke, the, the yeah. big Austrian writer. And this prize is going to Central Europe, which is unusual. Uh, in, incredible, yeah. in fact, and for me as a Polish, it shows that uh, despite all those uh, problems with democracy in my country, we still have something to say to the world, mm -hmm. and we have uh, very strong literature, very strong culture, and I am part of this big, big power, which is in in in, in my country, in Central Poland, in, in Central Europe. This year's winner, 76-year-old Austrian playwright, novelist and poet Peter Hanke, has been credited as one of the most thought-provoking writers in the German language. He has for some decades been one of the most influential writers of contemporary fiction, part of the literary debate already in 1966, when he made his debut with the novel Die Hornissen and the play Publikumsbeschimpfung. He burst onto the literary scene in the 1960s and has for some decades been one of the most influential writers of contemporary fiction. He has established himself as one of the most influential writers in Europe after the Second World War. His most popular works include A Sorrow Beyond Dreams, published in 1975, which dealt with his mother's suicide in 1971. When I, when I was writing in another way, way about the Civil War in Yugoslavia. There was, a, there was a lot of noise, and I could understand it. 
and so uh, so I feel comp I con I repeat it was for this it was it was, it was really a courageous deci decision by the by the academy in Stockholm. One is not it's, it's, I'm not a winner, huh, sir? You're not a winner? No, I, I, I they they choose my work, and, but I'm I'm not my nature is not the nature of a winner. Yeah, it's a kind of I feel a strange kind of freedom. The 2018 and 2019 awards were chosen by the Swedish Academy's Nobel Committee, a new body made up of four Academy members and five external specialists. Tokarzuk and Hanke will individually receive 9 million Swedish kronor, as well as a medal and a diploma. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The 2019 Nobel Prize in Medicine has been jointly awarded to William Kalin Jr., Sir Peter Ratcliffe and Greg Semenza for their pioneering research into how human cells respond to changing oxygen levels. While making the announcement, the Nobel Committee said that the Medicine Nobel lords discoveries that have paved the way for promising new strategies to fight anemia, cancer and many other diseases. Oxygen is essential for life and is used by virtually all animal cells in order to convert food to usable energy. However, the amount of oxygen available to cells, tissues, and animals themselves can vary greatly. This prize is for three physician scientists who found the molecular switch that regulates how our cells adapt when oxygen levels drop. The three scientists worked independently over a period of more than two decades to establish how cells can sense and adapt to changing oxygen availability. The laureates identified molecular machinery that regulates the activity of genes. In response to varying oxygen levels, past medicine Nobel laureates include scientific greats such as Alexander Fleming, the discoverer of penicillin, and Carl Leinster, who identified separate blood types and so enables safe transfusions to be widely introduced. We won it for understanding the mechanism by which your cells sense oxygen levels. Now oxygen is the fuel that powers you up, so the cells have to have precisely the right level of oxygen at all times, for which they need a sensor, and it's that mechanism that we discern. You are reminded daily that there are people counting on us, and uh, it's, it's not about, frankly, uh, the, the awards and accolades, although they're wonderful when they come, but it's about trying to get to the truth and to generate new knowledge and to have that knowledge eventually hopefully help uh, our patients. Um, and it's sort of the most fundamental uh, requirement there is, right? You can just hold your breath and, and you'll know that there's nothing you can do without for a shorter period of time than oxygen. And um, this sort of fundamental system that ensures that, that the body is able to do that. Um, and so every cell can, um, can respond to o low oxygen conditions and make uh, the hypoxia inducible factors um, and, and that will lead to a response that will either increase the delivery of oxygen to the cell or allow the cell to operate under lower oxygen conditions. The 2019 Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded jointly to John B. Goodenough, M. Stanley Whittingham and Akira Yoshino from Japan for their research in improving battery technology. The trio will share the prize for their work on the development of lithium-ion batteries. Goodenough is the oldest laureate to receive a Nobel Prize in any discipline, while Whittingham is the second British-born researcher to win a science Nobel this year. This year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry is shared by John B. Goodenough, M. Stanley Whittingham and Akira Yoshino. These three world-leading scientists deserve enormous credit for their contributions to lithium-ion battery technology. Announcing the award on October 9, 2019, the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences Nobel Committee said, through their work, this year's chemistry laureates have laid the foundation of a wireless, fossil fuel-free society. The trio will share the prize worth 9 million Swedish kronor, or about 9 lakh US dollars. This year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry rewards the development of lithium-ion batteries. We have gained access to a technical revolution. The laureates developed lightweight batteries 
or high enough potential to be useful in many applications. The three scientists each had unique breakthroughs that laid the foundation for the development of a commercial rechargeable battery, an alternative to older alkaline batteries containing lead, nickel or zinc that had their origins in the 19th century. The foundation of the lithium-ion battery was laid during the oil crisis of the 1970s. M. Stanley Whittingham from Britain developed the first functional lithium battery in the early 1970s. But metallic lithium is reactive and the battery was too explosive to be viable. American John Goodenough was responsible for developing far more powerful batteries in 1980 and Yoshino from Japan later eliminated pure lithium from the battery, producing the first commercially viable lithium-ion battery in 1985 and making it much safer to use. Sony released the first commercial lithium-ion batteries in 1991, based on Yoshino's configuration. At the age of 97, Professor Goodenough is the oldest ever Nobel laureate. Goodenough said he had no inkling that his work decades ago would have such a profound impact. I'm very happy that it's arrived. It's very nice to re receive a recognition. Yes. I had somebody with a cell telephone in my, in my room and they were, they, they told me that, that, that indeed that it had happened and so, well, you, life is full of surprises. <laughs> One of the recipients Stanley Whittingham said he was shocked by the win and hoped the prize would bring official recognition and electrify the economy. Great, yes. I st still hasn't sunk into me. That's not what it really means, but great. We're still working on lithium-ion batteries. We're trying to make them much better. They were very primitive in those days, so they're much better now, hold much more energy, but we can still go much better than where we are now and our goal is to double the energy density and cut the price in half. So you can all have electric vehicles, you can all use sun and wind and clean up the environment for everybody. Akira Yoshino on the other hand expressed happiness and hoped the technology would enable greater adoption of renewable energy sources. <laughs> Lithium-ion batteries have had a huge impact on our society, enabling modern portable electronics such as laptops and mobile phones. Their development was also key in allowing us to move away from the fossil fuels as the batteries enabled the storage of energy from solar, wind and other renewable sources. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV And the Nobel Prize in Physics for this year has been awarded once again to three scientists who have made major cosmic discoveries. The winners, James Peebles, Michelle Mayer and Didier Kilo, were named at a ceremony in Stockholm on 8th October, where their work on planets and the Big Bang earn them the prestigious prize. James Peebles, born in Canada, will share the award with Michel Mayer and Didier Kelo, who are both Swiss astronomers, and the laureates will receive the Nobel at an elegant ceremony in Stockholm on the 10th of December. This year's prize goes for contributions to our understanding of the evolution of the universe and Earth's place in the cosmos. Three scientists have won the 2019 Nobel Prize in Physics for groundbreaking discoveries about our universe. Scientists James Peebles, Michel Mayer and Didier Kelo were announced this year's winners at a ceremony in Stockholm on 8th October. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences have chosen the three scientists for their work in understanding how the universe has evolved and the Earth's place in it. One half of the award is for James Peebles for his theoretical discoveries in physical cosmology and the other half is for Michel Mayer and Didier Kelo for the discovery of an exoplanet orbiting a solar type star. An exoplanet is a planet outside our solar system. The winners will share the prize money of 9 million Swedish krona, a gold medal and a diploma. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences 
has today decided to award the 2019 Nobel Prize in Physics with one half to James Peebles for theoretical discoveries in physical cosmology and the other half jointly to Michel Mayor and Didier Quillot for the discovery of an exoplanet orbiting a solar type star. Canada born James Peebles was honored for his contributions to the understanding of the evolution of the universe and Earth's place in the cosmos. With others, he predicted the existence of cosmic microwave background radiation, the so called afterglow of the Big Bang. By studying the CMB, scientists have been able to determine the age, shape, and contents of the universe. Some of it will go to charity. My <laughs> Some will go to our children. Uh, uh, I must say, uh, I owe a lot to the University of Manitoba, and a chunk will go to it. In cosmology, we're invited to apply that same theory, extrapolated to scales that are about 10 to the 15 times larger. Spectacular. Why in the world should you assume that the same physics would apply on those scales as in the solar system? I was nervous about that. I was nervous about the lack of evidence about the nature of the universe. But it, the evidence kept appearing. Uh, it was quite a joyride. In October 1995, Michel Mayer and Didier Quillot announced the first discovery of a planet outside our solar system an exoplanet orbiting a solar-type star in our home galaxy, the Milky Way. This discovery started a revolution in astronomy and over 4,000 exoplanets have since been found in the Milky Way. Strange new worlds are still being discovered with an incredible wealth of sizes, forms and orbits. They challenge our preconceived ideas about planetary systems. Reacting to the news, Swiss scientist Didier Kello said, the minutes after finding out he had won the Nobel Prize were extremely intense. In my first reaction, I wanted to make sure it was not a joke. So I said, it's a joke, and as it should. And then uh, I, I couldn't think at all. I had a complete blackout for a couple of minutes because emotionally it was uh, extremely, extremely intense. Um, we all know, I mean, a scientist's Nobel Prize is a pinnacle for science. And, and, and frankly, I was not expecting that. Oui, que j'ai appris la nouvelle un peu par chance en me connectant à Internet, que j'étais dans les heureux récipiendaires de ce prix cette année, évidemment, c'est un, un certain choc parce que, comment dire, même si on en, on, on en rêve à certains moments. While James Peebles theoretical discoveries have contributed to our understanding of how the universe evolved after the Big Bang, Michel Mayer and Didier Kello have explored our cosmic neighborhoods in the hunt for unknown planets. Their discoveries have forever changed our conceptions of the world. This was the 113th Nobel Prize in Physics awarded since 1901, of which 47 awards have been given to a single laureate. Only three women have been awarded the Physics Nobel so far. Marie Curie in 1903, Maria Gopal Meyer in 1963 and Donna Strickland in 2018. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Nobel Prize is widely regarded as the most prestigious award given for intellectual achievement in the world. And these prizes are awarded annually from a fund bequeathed for the purpose by Alfred Nobel. In his will drafted in 1895, Nobel instructed that most of his fortune be set aside as a fund for awarding five annual prizes to those who, during the preceding year, shall have conferred the greatest benefit on mankind. The first Nobel Prizes in 1901 were awarded in Stockholm, Sweden, in the fields of physics, chemistry, medicine, literature and peace. The ceremony was held on the fifth death anniversary of Alfred Nobel, the Swedish inventor of dynamite and other high explosives. In his will, Nobel directed 
that the bulk of his vast fortune be placed in a fund in which the interest would be annually distributed in the form of prices to those who during the preceding year shall have conferred the greatest benefit on mankind Although Nobel offered no public reason for creating the prices it is widely believed that he did so out of moral regret over the increasingly lethal uses of his inventions in the war Alfred Nobel was born in Stockholm in 1833 four years later his family moved to Russia His father ran a successful St Petersburg factory that built explosive pines and other military equipment Educated in Russia, Paris and United States, Alfred Nobel proved to be a brilliant chemist. When his father's business faltered after the end of the Crimean War, Nobel returned to Sweden and set up a laboratory to experiment with explosives. In 1863, he invented a way to control the detonation of nitroglycerin, a highly volatile liquid that has been recently discovered but was previously regarded as too dangerous for use. In 1864, Nobel's nitroglycerin factory blew up, killing his younger brother and several other people. Searching for a safer explosive, Nobel discovered in 1867 that the combination of nitroglycerin and a porous substance called kaiselgur produced a highly explosive mixture that was much safer to handle and use. Nobel christened his invention dynamite for the Greek word dynamis meaning power. In 1875, Nobel created a more powerful form of dynamite, blasting gelatin, and in 1887 introduced belistite, a smokeless nitroglycerin powder. After Nobel's death, the Nobel Foundation was set up to carry out the provisions of his will and to administer his funds. Today the Nobel prizes are the most prestigious awards in the world. Notable winners include Marie Curie, Theodore Roosevelt, Albert Einstein, George Bernard Shaw, Winston Churchill, Ernest Hemingway, Martin Luther King Jr., the Dalai Lama, Mikhail Gorbachev and Nelson Mandela. The first female Nobel Peace Prize winner, Baroness Bertha von Suttner, in 1905 was perhaps the inspiration for the award itself. In 2014, Malala Yousafzai, the 17-year-old Pakistani activist who was shot by the Taliban in 2012 for promoting the education of women, shared the Nobel Peace Prize. She is the youngest recipient of a Nobel Prize. Multiple leaders and organizations sometimes receive the Nobel Peace Prize and multiple researchers often share the scientific awards for their joint discoveries. In 1968, a Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Science was established by the Swedish National Bank and first awarded in 1969. The Nobel Prizes are still presented annually on December 10th in Stockholm on the death anniversary of Nobel. Each recipient or laureate receives a gold medal, a diploma and a sum of money that is decided by the Nobel Foundation. Bureau Report Rajya Sabha TV. So that's it from us today in depth. We'll be back same time on Monday with a focus on some other subject. Just in case you miss the television broadcast of our program you can also watch it online on YouTube and Twitter and don't forget to send in your feedback and suggestions about our show thank you very much for your time